Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. In this video, I want to talk about the use of Mathematica to supplement video 3.1 from the ebook. So let me jump right into Mathematica here. So the problem that was given in that section, it was about the concentration of a drug in the bloodstream, and it was given by a certain rational function. And the goal of this was to figure out the maximum concentration in an interval from 0 to 8. So our goal is to figure out the time. And eventually, what is that concentration? So this is a closed interval problem. 0 to 8, it tells us pretty much in that problem. So here's some of the Mathematica code that we need to do. Well, it's not very complicated. I wrote a whole bunch of stuff down here, so we can follow, go through it slowly. The first thing you need to do is enter the function. Now, personally, what I like to do is I would like to take those decimals, the point 0, 1, 6, and I'm going to write that as a rational number, 16 over 1,000. So this first line here is this is my function that I want to enter. Now remember the underscore after the t. Since this is a rational function, and I eventually want to figure out critical values, I want to determine the domain of this thing. So the only values of t that we need to consider are values between 0 and 8. So anything that lands outside of that, I'm not going to worry about. So if I evaluate this cell, and this is a pretty big cell, I have a whole bunch of stuff in this cell. And you notice this line right here, this has a semicolon in it, and that's the suppression. So I'm not going to see that output right now. All I want to do is see what makes the denominator equal to zero, because those are the values we don't want. If I hit a shift enter, I wind up getting two answers, negative two, and well, oh, it's duplicated and negative two. Is negative two between zero and eight? It is not. So I don't have to worry about critical values that produce an undefined first derivative. So I'm going to go and comment this up. I'm going to suppress it with the semicolon. Now, critical values. It's where the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. We already dealt with the undefined part. There were no values of t in between zero and eight that made c prime undefined. So I need to figure out where the derivative is equal to zero. I added a little bit of extra code in here to say I am going to only look at values between 0 and 8. Again, if I get rid of that semicolon, I will actually see the result of that line. Another shift enter gives me a value of 2. 2 is between 0 and 8. And so now I need to compare the outputs of three different inputs. But wait. There's only one value that we see there, which is a 2. Remember the closed interval method? You need to consider not only the critical values, but the endpoints as well. The endpoints 0 and 8. So I want to determine the largest output here. So let me do a little bit of typing. Output. Well, that's C. C is the concentration. C is the output. What are the inputs? Well, there are three values of t that I want to input into the concentration function. I don't really need to see this t equals 2 again, so I'm going to suppress it with a semicolon. Evaluating this entire cell, I get three outputs. I get a 0, a 1 over 500, and a 4 over 3,125. Which one of those three is the largest? Looking at it a little bit critically here, I think 1 over 500 is the largest. But if you're not 100% sure, one thing you could do is there is a numerical operator that you can surround your outputs with, capital N. And now I have decimal answers. Which one of those three outputs is the largest? Well, the middle one, 0 0.002. So that 1 over 500 from before, and 
let me get that again. Let me go and get rid of that numerical operator. That one over 500 was the largest. So what input, what time produces that one over 500? Well, two. An input of two produces the largest concentration, which is one over 500. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day. Bye.